So here we are uh, in West Texas near San Angelo. Uh, we'd like to start this video series off talking a little bit about the sheep and goat industry. Um, and I guess the best place to start with that, Reed, if you could maybe tell us a little bit about uh, the history of the sheep and goat industry in Texas. Absolutely. Yeah, Texas has a very rich history in the sheep and goat industry. It, uh, it really started in the mid-1800s before the, the industry got pretty large. And what was going on at that time was whenever people were settling Texas. Uh, and, and much of West Texas is real suitable for sheep and goat production. And so they were, they were bringing in the fine wool sheep and angora goats um, because they were producing a, project, a product that was fairly shelf stable. Uh, they didn't have to take a cattle drive all the way over and, and it was a high demand product as well. And so we went from, uh, from almost no sheep and goat industry in the early 1800s to, uh, to the early 1900s having about 10 million sheep and about a half a million uh, goats. The majority of those being fine wool sheep and uh, angora or hair, mohair producing goats. So when you say they're well suited to the land resource, what, what do we mean by that? Topography, what they eat, mm -hmm. that kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, they're, they're small bodied animals, so yeah. they can get around in rough topography right. a little easier than right. larger animals. Yeah. That's one real, you know, there's quite a bit of rough country in West Texas, mm -hmm. as we all know. So. Those are some of the reasons. Um, so where were we at the, at, you say at the peak, we were at around 10 million. Uh, and then what's happened since then? So since then, we, we've seen a retraction. We're about, uh, about three quarters of a million sheep in Texas uh, and, and, and about a, a million uh, goats, mostly meat goats. And what we saw was a major transition uh, because we had less of a need or a demand for fiber being wool and mohair. So the industry shifted towards meat production. Uh, the first animal that shifted the most for sheep and goats was, was angora goats. Uh, the boar goat was brought into the 90s and, and we made a transition. There was always the Spanish goat in Texas, uh, but the boar goat was a little bit faster growing, was used across on a lot of those hair goats. And, and we're at a point now where in Texas, we're about 90% meat goats and about 10% hair or dairy. So, so earlier on, they were truly a, a dual purpose type mm -hmm. animal, wool and, and mohair and in addition to meat. Mm -hmm. Now with the deep, deep decreased demand for, for the fiber, mm -hmm. the, uh, the meat breeds have, have pretty much made a much larger mm -hmm. uh, pr proportion of the sheep and goat population in Texas. Right. And back to your original comment, uh, West Texas, and more specifically the Edwards Plateau, was was really ideally suited for small ruminants. It's a, a short grass country. Uh, it, it doesn't rain a lot. It's arid environment. They can go longer without water. The forage that's available, whether it's in grass or forbs or browse, can all be utilized by sheep and goats. And so it just really fit the land resource uh, um, as well as the demand for the products. 